With a name like Mr. Luxury, I'm fairly upfront about the fact that I'm doing pretty well financially. That being said, no matter how well my investments are doing, how much my businesses succeed, or how many properties I manage, I'll probably still never be as rich as a certain group of people. The wealthy kings and rulers of history, some of whose wealth is so vast, their fortune is incalculable. Today, we're going to take a look at the 10 wealthiest rulers that have ever ruled. We'll take a look at how they got their money, and more importantly, how they spent it. Number 10. Muammar Gaddafi – $200 billion Number 10 on our list happens to be one of the most recently living rulers, and my, 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 are people divided on him. Muammar Gaddafi may have been born in a tent to an impoverished family in Libya, but just 27 years later, he was leading a successful coup to become the leader of the country. Over the course of his 40-year authority, rule, he managed to amass a fortune of $200 billion. Muammar Gaddafi's political career is book-ended by overthrown governments. As I mentioned, at 27 years old, Muammar Gaddafi led a coup, overthrowing the monarchy that ruled Libya at the time. But in 2011, it was he that was overthrown when a rebel group seized control and killed him. What happened between his sudden rise to power and his sudden loss of power depends on who you ask. Many in Libya praise him for removing foreign military bases, improving education, and decreasing poverty. However, many criticize his rule because of human rights violations he oversaw, which included public executions, arbitrary detention of those who went against him, and even torture. His forced expulsion of Italians, Jews, refugees, and natives has also been the subject of much criticism, and his funding of terrorist groups led him being regarded guarded by the United States and the UK as a terrorist. Like I said in the beginning, this guy's divisive. But there is one thing that everyone can agree on. Momar was rich. After his death, $200 billion worth of assets were linked to him via bank accounts, real estate, and corporate investments. Momar is known for having lived a less lavish lifestyle than many other Arabic leaders, but that doesn't mean it wasn't luxurious. He changed multiple times a day into expensive outfits, considering himself a fashion icon. One of the compounds he lived on included several buildings, as well as two tennis courts, a football pitch, a Bedouin tent, and several lush gardens. Number 9. William the Conqueror $229.5 billion Many of us get nicknames throughout our life, but few of us will have a nickname as impressive as number 9 on our list. William the Conqueror, who had an estimated net worth of $229.5 billion. As a child, William the Conqueror was known as William the Bastard, which doesn't quite have the same regal ring to it. However, it was actually accurate, because William was born as the result of an affair between his father, Robert I, Duke of Normandy, and a woman named Haliva. William the Conqueror followed in his father's footsteps and became Duke of Normandy at the age of eight, but those eight years before he gained his title were full of chaos. Three of his guardians died brutal deaths fueled by political power grabs, and even his mentor was killed. This tumultuous, dangerous rise to power is regarded by some as the reason why William the Bastard was able to become a strong, calculating conqueror. By 15, he was knighted and defending Normandy against rebellions. And by 35, he had conquered Brittany and Maine. And just three years later, he conquered England, becoming the very first Norman King of England. So, sure, he was king. But where did that $229.5 billion come from? Well, mainly the people of England, Brittany, and Maine. He plundered the territory that he conquered, taking riches for himself and his army. And once he had control over England, he liked to burn that money. He built dozens of castles all across the country, being the first person to do so. Number 8. Mir Osman Ali Khan $230 billion Only one person on this list has been featured on the cover of Time magazine as the world's richest person, and that's none other than number 8, Mir Osman Ali Khan, who had an estimated net worth 
of $230 billion. Mir Osman Ali Khan was the last ruler of the princely state of Hyderabad in India, and boy, did his life rule. He descended from a long line of rulers known as Nizams, and that ancestry meant he had billions at his disposal from the moment he was born. Among those billions included the Jewels of Nizam, an impressive collection of riches decades old. The collection consisted of 173 jewels, including $2 billion worth of emeralds, pearl-studded necklaces, buckles, and earrings, as well as crowns, armbands, and rings dripping in gemstones. The centerpieces of the collection included the Satlada, a stunning necklace with 465 pearls, and the Jacob Diamond, the fifth biggest Polish diamond in the world. If I had the Jacob Diamond, I'd probably have it on display in a stunning case, or set into an incredibly heavy ring. But that wasn't Osman's style. Instead, he used the precious diamond as a paperweight. He lived in a massive palace, which was run with the help of 300 servants, and he had over 50 Rolls-Royce vehicles. Of course, he spread some of his wealth around too. He donated to educational institutes and religious institutes, and used much of his wealth to facilitate the introduction of railways, electricity, and airplanes to his kingdom. Number 7. Nicholas II Romanov – $300 billion Nicholas Romanov, Emperor of Russia, is number 7 on our list of the most wealthy rulers in history, with an estimated net worth of $300 billion. Unfortunately, that impressive fortune also contributed to his own demise. The Romanovs do not have a happy end to their story, but Nicholas Romanov really fulfilled the here for a good time and not a long time mantra. During his rule of Russia, the average factory worker earned 500 rubles a year, and high-ranking generals made 5,000. Nikolai's annual salary was 200,000 rubles, 40 times that of generals, and 400 times that of factory workers. And while that seems absurd, well, it gets even more absurd. Nicholas often overshot his salary, spending an additional 150,000 rubles per year. And he wasn't shy about the fact that he was spending money either. He was known to spend 20,000 rubles on custom-made clothes, and his wife was was known for spending twice that. And then there was food. While some in Russia struggled to feed themselves, Nicholas dined on four and five course meals, which were prepared by his 55 person kitchen staff. The meals were so extravagant that the leftovers were sold as delicacies at other restaurants. As with many rulers on this list, Nicholas was a fan of throwing parties and extravagant events. His coronation included 24 tons of silver and gold tableware, and a choir of 1,200 people who were hired to simply serenade Nicholas and his wife. The event was the most expensive coronation in Russian history. Number 6. King Solomon – $2.2 trillion A lot of rulers on this list are old, but very few are old enough to be spoken of in the Bible. In fact, the next wealthy ruler on our list, King Solomon of Israel, is pretty much exclusively discussed in religious texts, including the Bible, the Talmud, and the Quran. Based on these texts, some experts have placed his net worth at a whopping $2.2 trillion. King Solomon's father, David, founded the Judean dynasty by uniting all the tribes of Israel. King Solomon then continued his father's legacy by building up Israel, which included the construction of Jerusalem's city wall, royal palace, and temples. At the time, Israel was flourishing, but many experts believe that the increase in wealth within Israel was largely hoarded by King Solomon, rather than distributed to the people. Every year, he's said to have taken 25 tons of gold in taxes, which would be worth $1.6 billion today. Number 5. Augustus Caesar – $4.6 trillion You know that guy Julius Caesar, who contributed to the rise of the Roman Empire, had a fling with Cleopatra and, well, got stabbed? Well, he he had an adopted son named Augustus, who happens to be one of the richest people in history, with an estimated fortune of $4.6 trillion. He owned a fifth of the wealth of the Roman Empire, which was no small empire, accounting for 30% of the world's GDP at the time. Upon 
upon Julius Caesar's death, Augustus received 75% of his wealth, which was a vast amount of money. How vast? Well, though there isn't an exact number, it is widely known that after his death, Julius Caesar left 300 sesterces to every Roman citizen, which was the equivalent of four months' wages. And this barely left a dent in the fortune that he left to his heir. Augustus continued what Julius started by doubling the size of the Roman Empire over the course of his 40-year rule. Upon his own death, Augustus was quoted as saying, I founded Rome of clay, I leave it to you of marble. And indeed, he did. He founded a courier service, police and fire services, and a standing army. He also helped modernize Rome by building roads to connect cities and businesses. During his rule, he resided in what is now known as the House of Augustus. The palace featured frescoes on every wall and mosaics on every ceiling across multiple extravagant rooms. There were even rooms that were solely dedicated to displaying weapons and art. Number 4. Akbar I. $21 trillion. The next ruler on our list is a descendant of none other than Genghis Khan. And although he didn't quite conquer as much as his ancestor, he still made quite an impact on history and got to enjoy an impressive fortune. Mughal Emperor Akbar I had an estimated worth of $21 trillion. Although many historians consider his wealth to be incalculable, Akbar I took to the throne of the Mughal Empire in India in 1556, and he spent the majority of his reign expanding his territory. By the end of his rule in 1605, he had tripled the size of his empire, which then stretched from northern Afghanistan all the way to India. His luxurious palace was known to have exquisite art, carvings, and opulent furniture, but little is actually known about how he spent his fortune. What is known, however, is that Akbar was incredibly progressive and tolerant for his time. Religions coexisting was practically unheard of, but Akbar worked hard to unite his territory and unify people, whether they were Muslim, Hindu, or anything in between. Though he was Muslim himself, many of the city leaders and his advisors were Hindu, and they worked with him to translate Hindu literature, making it accessible to all. Number 3. Zhao Zhu, 30 plus trillion. Zhao Zhu, Emperor of Shenzong of Song, is yet another ruler whose wealth is almost beyond comprehension. Experts know it is easily above $30 trillion, but the exact amount is a bit hard to pin down, probably because he was the ruler of China from 1067 to 1085, and that was a hell of a time to be ruler of China, during perhaps one of the most prosperous eras in history. Around this time, China invented gunpowder, printing, magnetic compasses, and the world's first paper currency. They stood as the world's top bronze makers, which earned them a fortune. They also had another claim to fame, rice, which had an incredible increase in production following a law that allowed farmers to own their own land. Rice became a staple of their economy, which made them a commercial superpower. And they didn't have to worry about others stepping in and trying to get a piece of the pie, or, well, rice, because they also formed the world's first navy in order to protect their trade routes. While China was doing well, the emperor was doing even better. During this time period, China had a highly centralized economy, which allowed their ruler to have an immense control over the finances of the country. However, it appears he used at least some of that financial control in a selfless way. He was one of the first rulers to found a tax collection system, and he was behind one of the first versions of a welfare system, which was put in place to improve the lives of peasants, the unemployed, and the homeless. Genghis Khan, trillions upon trillions of dollars. We've reached a point in the list where the ruler's fortunes are so vast, so incalculable, that they're almost incomprehensible. In fact, the two people who historians consider to be the most wealthy rulers in history will be tied for first, solely because the kingdoms they reign 
seemed overstretched so far, and the treasures they held inside were so large. First, we'll start with the infamous Genghis Khan, whose wealth is estimated to have been well, well into the trillions. He is known for expanding the Mongol Empire to be the largest contiguous empire in the world, stretching over 12 million square miles between the coast of China and reaching as far as the Adriatic Sea in Europe. Genghis Khan came from nothing to become one of the most fearsome rulers of all time. His father was poisoned when Genghis was just nine years old, and Genghis was sent to live in the tribe of his future wife, Borte. Seven years later, Borte was kidnapped, and Genghis spent months tracking her down and rescuing her. Genghis then worked to bring all the nomadic tribes of Mongolia under his rule, and later worked to expand his kingdom through rather devastating means. His troops would descend upon towns and cities, conquering them and taking all the riches found within. It's estimated that over the course of his rule, 40 million people were massacred. Some experts even estimate that he reduced the world's population by as much as 11%. His wealth can be attributed to the vast land acquired in his conquering, as well as the property taken within those cities and territories. Upon Genghis Khan's death, he was buried in a tomb in a secret location that still hasn't been found to this day. The tomb is rumored to contain a portion of his vast fortune, so perhaps someday we may find it and get a true picture of just how wealthy this fearsome ruler truly was. Mansa Musa, trillions upon trillions upon, well, you get the idea. Tied for first is a ruler whose wealth was so immense that just spending part of it on vacation was enough to cripple the economy of Egypt for 12 years. No, seriously. Jeff Bezos has money, but he doesn't have cripple a world power money. Mansa Musa was the king of Mali during a very affluent time. While Europe struggled with the Black Death, famine, and civil war, Mansa Musa was busy building mosques, universities, and palaces. Oh, and also ruling an empire that was in control of more than half of the world's gold, which would have been worth well over five trillion dollars. Mali was rich with gold salt and ivory, and after Mansa Musa expanded the kingdom to include the port city of Timbuktu, they were in charge of a trade route that enabled their economy to soar. Mansa Musa's biggest display of wealth was his pilgrimage to Mecca. He didn't do the 2,000 mile trip alone, however. He brought a caravan that included 60,000 people, including 1,000 attendants, 500 slaves who carried 3,000 pounds worth of gold, and five 500 camels who carried 30,000 pounds of gold. Basically, the modern equivalent of his journey would be driving from Rodeo Drive to Wall Street with hundreds of solid gold Bugattis. Now that's luxury. On this very flashy pilgrimage, Mansa Musa stopped in Cairo, spending three months there. During that time, he gave away and spent so much gold that he actually caused the value of gold to depreciate. It took Egypt almost 12 years to recover just from the impact of his shopping spree. So, there you have it, the richest rulers in history. What about you guys? What would you do if you were worth trillions upon trillions of dollars and ruled almost all of the world? Let me know in the comments down below. I, for one, would probably have parties similar to Gatsby, but that's just me. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. If you'd like to learn more about Mensa Musa's immense wealth, you can check out that video right here. As always, I'm Mr. Luxury. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some bank statements to look at. Pip-pip to doodly-doo.